Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video. In this video we're going to be taking a first look at a new character coming to the game which is Lewis. It's another Telltale character from Season 4. This time I guess you would say it's from the sort of good side as we have had Minerva, Dorian and Abel released already and they were from the Delta and then now we've got Lewis as the first of like the good guys. Uh, this is what he looks like as a 5 star and this is what he looks like as a 6 star and an S class in terms of his visuals. And as you can see he looks a lot like he did in season 4 with the jacket, very uh, memorable jacket for Lewis. He hasn't yet used the weapon that he used in season 4 where it was like a chair leg. I do really want a character to come out where he's got the chair leg, that would be really hilarious. But he is the second Lewis character to be released in The Walking Dead Road Survival. The first one was an alert character and he was a disarm character. He was actually pretty good when he was first released. And I guess he's still pretty decent now as a disarm character. So we'll look at his stats though on this character. And he's got 3,613 attack, 4,780 defense, 3,762 HP. This is with 30 veteran rings, a lot of defense on this character and not much attack compared to the defensive stats his trait is fast and he's considered a support character and i'm not too bothered about his stat balance here you know having lots of defense is not necessarily a bad thing if you want to balance out the stats you can just go all in on the hp with the mods weapon that sort of thing it's good to have a balance between the two if you want a character to be very tanky or you can decide that you're going to go in on attack if you want to make them more offensive you generally speaking wouldn't go too much more on the defense just because it's already so high We'll go across to his Adrenaline Rush and it's called Impeding Rush that costs 76 AP. It deals 900% damage to up to two enemies. Those enemies get 90% slow and all others get 50% slow for three turns. So two main parts to this rush. The first part dealing huge amounts of damage, quite similar to someone like Michelle in the six star era where he will focus on one character the target you select it will damage that character and a random other character on the defense team in the Michelle era this turned out to be a negative later on just because of certain characters that came out like payback certain characters like bide where you wouldn't necessarily want that character to be attacked especially a payback character because obviously it reflects rush damage whereas Lewis not going to have that to deal with too much you don't see Negan that often or Wayland for that matter but they can also be normalized now so that means the specialist skill can be sort of neutralized and, and got rid of so it's not too much of an issue that is a huge amount of damage even though he's got a low attack stat that is a huge amount of damage if you obviously want to raise his attack offensive weapon offensive combat mods that damage is going to be massively amplified i have used angel who also has an offensive rush only 400 percent but her damage is around the same amount of Lewis and I can kill S-Class characters from full HP with decent buffs of, of other characters. Like if I've got the Alice attack buff, absolutely destroyed. 900% is gonna be insane. So the damage output of Lewis, even if you do not increase his attack too much, will still be really, really good. Now the second half is huge amounts of control where it controls everybody. And that is a huge amount. When you think those two characters that he attacks, if he doesn't kill them, which he most likely will because that's a huge amount of damage, but if he doesn't kill them, they're going to have 90% slow, which basically means if they've got a 76 AP cost rush, it will now be 144 AP cost. And then all the other teammates that he doesn't attack now have a 50% slow. So if they have a 76 AP cost rush, they'll now have, I think, 114 AP cost rush. So basically it adds a turn to two turns to get the rush so normally on a defense team it'd be attack attack rush attack attack rush depending on the character arav obviously doesn't obey those rules but when it comes to being slowed this much it'll be like attack 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 rush and in that one extra turn your defense teams are already going to be rushing a turn later than attack teams and now it's going to be two turns later so attack teams will have the ability to potentially command somebody like arav command somebody who has a quicker rush or you know extra control so i don't know i think this is actually a pretty good character for an attack team to be able to control a defense team so obviously his adrenaline rush all round i think is very good and it's got the right sort of recharge rate 76 or below is great I think this character would work really well on an attack team with this rush, really well on a defense team with this rush. We'll have to see the rest of his kit to sort of see how well he would work otherwise, but so far, this character's looking really good. Lots of damage if you want him to be that way, or just full control. You can either go just 
really tanky with this character and just utilize the control element of the rush or just boost the attack a little bit and maybe just you know one shot two characters potentially and he could even do that anyway we'll move on and look at the active skill and it's ap gain and recover crosshairs it has an initial cooldown of two cooldown of three number of uses five this character gets 100 percent ap and recovers from crosshairs one other teammate recovers from crosshairs so obviously there are downsides to this, especially with the recent release of Angel who has really heavy exhaust on her first turn. This character would take 5,000 damage due to that. However, because he's an S-Class character compared to Dr. Stevens, for instance, who has a, you know, a similar AP gain, and potentially he's going to be a tanky character, you could get his HP to 8, 9,000 without too much of a problem if you really wanted to go all in on that HP with the weapon, mods, you know, he's going to get leader bonuses on defense teams, that sort of thing. On attack teams, that's not going to be a problem because you can also just say, I'm not going to do my active because I'm exhausted. So you can time your the, the active a bit better. But on defense teams, it can be a bit of an issue. The cleanse crosshairs is nice because crosshairs obviously means decap, limited time decap for the debuff. But cleansing it for himself and one other is it's just a nice little bonus I see on top of the 100% AP gain. That of course would trigger trauma if the trauma was active and someone did actually have crosshairs that he cleansed. That would be 3000 damage in the case of Angel or whatever the trauma number would be from another character. But that's going to be the same sort of thing that any character who cleanses is going to run into. So I wouldn't really see that as being a huge negative just that there is an actual counter to it. Now he has got an interesting specialist skill that we do not see too often which is Retribution 2. Two. I think Retribution 2 is, isn't actually too bad as just a standalone special skill because this character, if he starts rushing with that sort of damage, with that sort of control, he's going to be devastating to an attack team. He's going to be devastating to a defense team, mainly an attack team if you think about who you can focus when you're attacking. You're going to try and take this character out first, generally speaking, because you do not want him to be able to do things like nuke two of your characters or completely slow your entire team. So obviously, when this character dies, all of his teammates will get 50% of their max HP, which is a large amount of AP. This will run into the same sort of issues as his active skill when it comes to AP gain, because there is a counter which is exhaust. If you want to learn more about exhaust, I did do a gameplay video when it came to Angel, which you can see hopefully in the top right hand corner right now. And that just shows you how exhaust works. But there aren't too many characters that have it. And Angel obviously is the best character when it comes to exhaust. But some people just don't use Angel. Some people didn't claim her. Some people had James and Krista. Some people went for two Kristas. Some people went for two James. Some people did not claim Angel at all. And I have seen some people say that because there's an obvious counter that's come out recently. It makes a, a character useless. It, that isn't exactly how it works. There's counters to every character because there's a trait table, you know? One trait hits another trait harder, the next trait hits another trait harder. It's just the way it goes. And that's the same with skills. Generally speaking, there should always be a counter to something. So there should always be a strategy to be able to take something out. So him having AP gain is not terrible, but as that character, you can say, hey, I'm gonna be taking lots of AP. I potentially need main resist because then I can't take exhaust damage. I maybe need main resist on my teammates as well because i've got heavy ap gain from specialist skill here with retribution so you can play around your own effectively air quotes weaknesses if you think that's the case now he doesn't have an attached weapon so you can build whatever weapon you want for him and there is a nice weapon that fast characters can have which is absolute defense but the new one it also causes slow so this guy could be like the king of slow he's got loads of slow on his rush potentially have slow on the weapon it's going to be really really hard to come up against i think if you make him tanky enough absolute defense is one of those ones especially on a character that you can make really well defensive is very hard to get through this arm is a must but then there's the new force slots and some of the new force slots are pretty decent i think for fast characters they're not the best but he does have a healing force slot and those are actually pretty good this character could work quite well on a defense team with the likes of lao po and on an attack team i think he'd be a good side character in terms of doing secondary damage if you had him and heng yen in the same sort of team those sort of characters they're not absolute nukers but the amount of damage output they're going to have the control because they've got stun slow it's gonna be very hard for a defense team to recover from that unless they are very well set up so all in all i think lewis is pretty good he has obvious counters but i think they're so obvious that if you do pick up this counter you know how to combat that 
Like I said, resists are there for a reason. You can easily block off some of those counters if you so wish. I'm really happy that there's another Telltale character coming into the game. There are going to be some more in the future. Lewis was not one of my favorite characters from season four, but I did like him quite a lot. I do hope that one day we do get to see a strong version of Lewis where he has an attached weapon called Charles like he did in season four because I thought that was so good and I'm really surprised they haven't brought it over to Road to Survival because that's just the perfect fit. But we'll see what happens in the future and I'm looking forward to the new characters that are coming on the way. Do tell me what you think about Lewis. Are you going to be doing a pull? Of course I am because he's a Telltale character. It's just a natural thing. I have to do a temple because he's a Telltale character but I wouldn't mind getting him either because I do actually think he's pretty good. Especially that slow. If that goes off, it's absolutely game over. But that is the end of my video, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.